Yes, hello all, Ruckus here, back from my trip to Sydney. The wedding was fantastic, although I did drink too much and spend a whole lot of money. A couple of things occurred whilst I was away. The first was a suggestion by a friend of mine, APFSDS1, shout out to him. Uh, he suggested that perhaps I could do a video on being the bottom tier and what to do in that situation, how to contribute to your team. And I thought that was a great idea. Uh, a lot of my videos are as top tier, simply because as top tier you have more of a chance of performing the best and coming out on top. But that's not to say that bottom tiers cannot do well or aren't important in a game. They definitely are. So I thought I'd give that a crack. The second thing that occurred was I unlocked the Cromwell, the tier 6 British medium. And good lord the thing is like greased lightning it is one of the fastest tanks i've ever played it is fantastically fun to drive a lot better than the tier 5 crusader which i rage sold and blew through 45,000 xp to get rid of it let us never speak of it again it was terrible now unlocking the cromwell at this stage was fortuitous because as a tier 6 vehicle in a tier 8 game uh, fully upgraded playing to its strengths and the right hands it is more than capable of holding its own but before we go into those strengths let's uh, discuss a few easy things you can do to mitigate the disadvantages of being the bottom tier the first up uh, as i've said before is to platoon i really cannot stress that enough having a platoon mate by my side someone let's say one of my regulars like alpha bro carrick or furion the confidence I go into as a bottom tier in a match is doubled, uh, cannot be understated. Uh, a one-on-one, -on -one, a tier 6 say, versus a tier 8, if the two players are equal, the tier 8 obviously has the massive advantage, but if you've got two tier 6s against an 8, or any kind of spread like that, at any tier, the two tanks, as long as they're driven competent players, uh, really should come out on top uh, almost every time because the enemy can only point their gun in one direction So platoon the second kind of goes without saying and that is to only play your fully upgraded vehicles whenever possible Making sure they've got all the consumables and equipment and ammo loadout required uh, And that uh, the vehicle is at its top potential if you go into battle in a stock tank you're going to have a bad time if you're bottom tier. I mean, at the best of times, you're relying on a good team to carry you through. But if your tank is completely useless, then there's no way you are going to have a good game. So, what I do with my new vehicles is to basically just play them for their times two, or whatever the experience multiplier is at the time, until they're at a state where the gun is reliable, uh, or the mobility is uh, top notch, depending on the strengths of the vehicle, and then I'll play it constantly. If you do otherwise, you are just uh, opening yourself up to a lot of frustration, basically. The gameplay at tier 10 is no better. In fact, I prefer mid-tier games. I think they're more fun, so don't rush your way through the game by forcing yourself to play your stock tanks until they're good. Just uh, play them for the multipliers and focus on the tanks you have fully upgraded and you enjoy playing, and you will perform better. So let's cut back into this gameplay and we'll discuss the strengths of the Cromwell and how to best take advantage of them in a high tier game. I played this game quite ballsy as you probably saw. Carrick and myself rushed the hill early to spot the enemy and give our team an early advantage. We then rushed that T32 and got in behind him and that uh, distraction allowed our team to finish him off. And now we've kind of got the enemy boxed into a corner. Uh, you can just see how badly the Cromwell is at ramming. Flat Panzer is the lightest tier 6 in the game, I believe, and I still lost 100 hit points accidentally crashing into him, so do not use your Cromwell as a ramming vehicle. It's not one of its strengths. Armor is also very poor. Uh, 76 mil on the turret is as best it's going to get, and the gun is just, just average in all regards. It's a typical tier 6 medium gun. Does the job as you can see there on the side of that Tiger 2 turret. I didn't expect him to be able to spot me there, so take some return fire. Run away, son! I'll hide behind a rock here. The mobility though of the Cromwell is absolutely phenomenal. The thing is like a goddamn mountain goat climbing up cliffs at 40 kilometers an hour. Uh, it's unparalleled, and this is definitely the uh, greatest strength 
of the vehicle, I think, and uh, what you want to be taking advantage of when you, uh, or well, any game, but especially in a tier 8 game. So let's move into the post-game stats. This was the last game I played uh, in this particular session. All three games are from one session a couple of days ago. And you can see there I've got the Survivor medal in a Cromwell, which is outrageous. <laughs> so what you won't see me doing in this vehicle is standing face to face with someone and fighting. This is a flanker, for sure. Uh, and a scout, as you will see in this next game, which is myself and Wenjin. Uh, Wenjin in the Premium Fury. And here on Black Goldfield. So, with that mobility and the power to weight of 23 tons per horsepower, which is light tank good, uh, you want to be using this as a scout whenever possible. Black Goldville is a big map, plenty of opportunity to scout, and I'm going to push early. Cautiously to start with, don't want to run into that T44 on the enemy side, but I'm clear to get to here. Target spotted, run away, play it cautious. Only a single Tiger spotted. That's interesting. Uh, unless the T44 has rushed straight into the refinery down south, that means that the entire team is heading up north uh, into the high ground. And the T44 is spotted, which means I'm free to scout the rest of this southern end of the map. Heavy tanks generally do not have great view range. See how close I am to that big gaggle of heavy tanks and I still haven't been spotted. And here we are, this is the perfect position for a flanking medium. Focus the biggest, fattest, easiest target first, that Tiger, uh, T-43-4, sorry. And this is harassing the enemy at its best. All they want to do is focus on the heavy tanks and the tank destroyers in front of them, but here they are, they cannot get comfortable because someone is shooting them in the side and rear. And the gun is performing really well at this stage. I didn't expect to get through the IS-3. Engine fire. One more shot. Another engine fire. And that forces him to make a rash move and the ISU cleans him up. Spotted means there's at least someone left down on this side of the map. Hang back a bit looking to reset the camo. And there is Flat Panzer. Putting some fire into him. I cannot hang around here for too long though as you can see I'm taking fire from the hill so move off to the right in behind some more cover and either let the camo reset or choose more targets. team is playing quite smart. A lot of people have flanked around. The KV-4 has come with us. He's attacking from the south as well. So we've got the enemy boxed into that top corner. And I'm free now to fire at will because no one's going to spot me from that distance. I've got the Cromwell, my Cromwell set up as a scout. Um, coated optics and the vents also with gun lane drive. Uh, not much I usually go a, uh, a gun rammer for a medium, but I really want to accentuate the the mobility strength of the Cromwell and use that instead of focusing on the gun. The gun is just an afterthought. So, two enemies left. T-44 and a T-34. And I take some very poorly aimed shots here. Nowhere near. Not even the same postcode. And now there's a rush on to kill the T-34. Wenjin's in deep. And look how fast this thing powers up a hill. 40 k's an hour, 35, no dramas. Sneak in there and kill steal that guy like a boss. Scout metal. Top damage with those engine fire. Top XP, 2000 damage with those engine fires. Then 40,000 credits again. And now for the last match on Rockfield. 
me and Carrick again, both in Cromwells. And it's quite a tier 8 game, three tier 8s on either side. And again, using the speed to scout out the enemy early on, uh, divine their movements and uh, positioning, which will give my own team, if they're any good, uh, a good chance to react and position themselves correctly. Eyes three spotted, I hang around, perhaps unwisely as I'm spotted. Lucky the ISU didn't whack me. Carrick is up. Camo's reset, so I'm free to stick my head out again. It's all very quiet on this side of the map. Panther unwisely driving out in the open. Try and take advantage of that. Down he goes. Uh, another flat panzer. But it's still quite quiet up here. We don't know where their main force is. So have another poke. One ice three. KB5 down the valley. Myself and Carrick have a similar idea at this stage. Let's go. Let's go have a sus down this side. Now the speed of the Cromwell is not always a strength, as you'll see. I believe I can fly. <laughs> Shit. Luckily, I hadn't been spotted. Tiger P fired at the tank strobe by me. Do a bit of inventive driving here to see if I could get shots away, basically. I've never been up here before, so why not? One thing you can do in the Cromwell is to reposition regularly. If you don't like a spot, just get out of there, drive off to the next spot. But now we're in trouble. KV-5 is rushing our position. It's all heavy tanks and tank destroyers on this side of the map, so... I didn't think I was going to get up the hill in time. Why not? Let's, let's have a run this way, see what happens. Targets everywhere to my left, all high tier. Luckily, the terrain has given me a lot of cover from them. Uh, up north, Carrick and the other mediums are rushing the two flat panzers, so they're distracted. And now I can flank around, unopposed, similar to the last game, and put in harassing fire. Not huge damage, but you can just see how uncomfortable it makes people to have someone firing at their rear, no matter how big the alpha of your gun. Got that ISU stressing. He turns to engage me, but that exposes his side to everyone else. Same with the Tiger P. Slowly bring his gun to bear, but that frees up everyone else to fire at him. And now they've got two tier 8 heavies left. And again, the speed of the Cromwell, getting me into trouble. The only damage I take all game is crash damage. See there, not great pen on this gun. I'm getting Carrick's Road there, sorry, mate. Focus the radio man's weak spot. But even that from this angle is not a reliable pen, as you can see. So not huge damage on that game, but it was a lot of fun. Get to cover a lot of ground in this thing. And another scout medal. So, I hope it was informative, guys. Uh, I will do another episode like this at some stage to for a different vehicle type. But I'll leave you with the remaining post-game stats, and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace!